What's up, everyone? Welcome back to the card table, where today we're doing a little bit of a Thanksgiving special, because there's no better way to cook your turkey than to deep fry it with lightning dragons. That's right, we're, talk we're talking about Erads. Eradicators, Eradicators, they're the best ones. Makewisher is not the best one. Dungaree is actually the best one. I lied. Just 10 likes, I'll do a Dungaree deck. Dungaree. Yeah, um, so Narcomy's always kind of been like the third of the big three for me, where... As I said last time, I started the game with Royal Paladins. Obviously, I'm a huge gear player. But during Limit Break formats, I just went straight to freaking Narukami, and I haven't gone back since. Granted, since then, all I really play is Eradicators. I have delved into Brawlers. I have played Make Sure and all that fun stuff. But it's just, it's just like, version I like. So without further ado, let's go. Going with 1v1b. 1v1b Luard, the deck. Also known as Lynchu, I'm proud of you. This is Lynchu. He's a starter. Right, so, let's use skill. Um, kind of blast one when you boost one of your um, eradicator vanguards. Has to be an eradicator. Or eradicator, anything that hits. Kind of blast one, shove and soul. Get rid of the grade one or lower, I believe. Yeah, grade one or lower of your choice. This is fantastic. This lets you basically get rid of all your opponent's pesky starters. You have any cute boosters out in the field that have, might have cool effects on them. Fairly early game aggressive, I'd say probably almost on turn, uh, card for card, the most aggressive starter next to freaking Wingle Brave, because as soon as he hits a field, you're like, boom, what up, boom, what up, boom, what up, you just keep on punching him until they get rid of him, or until he goes off. There's a card that you can combo with him to get your kind of blast back, which you'll see later, but for now, just know that this is a freaking amazing starter, and I love him. I've been playing ever since the beginning. Of course, we are running retired stuff, so we go with my o the OG avatar. Good old Gauntlet Buster. I need, I would like a third SGR, because I have two SGRs and one SP. I have a lot of SPs. Anyways, Gauntlet Buster, uh, he's an old card. Kind of familiar with Vanquisher in terms of his Limit Break. And this, of course, is a Limit Break deck, so I think that helps out a little bit, because you're not waiting on your Generation Break. You're not waiting on your opponent to really push you to a certain point. So much as you're just sitting there and saying, I'm going to be rushing you anyways, come at me, bro. And if you can't come at me, bro, I will. I have ways to accelerate into this. So, what Slip Break does, like I said, it's very similar to how the GB2 of Vanquisher is, where anytime a card gets retired from your effect, I believe, yeah, from your effect, he gets plus three and a crit until end of turn. This does stack. You can interact with it the exact same way that Vanquisher does when you go into your G guards. And yeah, it's cool. With power, stacks of powers. What a couple of cards do. In addition to that, he has a counter blast two eradicator cards. Has to be eradicators. And your opponent chooses a card to retire. So good synergy with his first effect. The break's an important one because you have other ways to get rid of cards without activating his counter blast. So you don't have to be as conservative with it. But it's very much a very threatening card, especially if you're able to get your limp break early on and just completely punish the opponent for having anything on the field. In terms of that, you're also going to be running two old school Vanquishers. Not Vanquisher, freaking Descendant. And three new school Descendant. They're both kind of the same card. This one's a rear guard, this one's a Vanguard. Um, basically, their skill is if it doesn't hit, you could re stand it. His is a limit break four, where it's kind of blast one, discard three eradicators. Two eradicators? Yeah, three eradicators. And he stands with a crit. So. Once again, great for punishing them. This whole deck just goes out of the gate swinging. So you should hit me him at 3 to 4 pretty quickly. And um, once they get there, you're just like, alright, you want to take this 1? Or do you want to take this 2? Or do you want to take this 2? And you just keep on stacking triggers wherever you want. He is pretty good. I like the Gauntlet better just because he's offensive. But if you can't get there, there's this. And of course, his backup friend is everyone's new favorite, Sigma. The only great three in here that's not SP or higher. Um, like I said, he's basically a resand on rear guard. So his resand cost is kind of blast one, discard any card, and he just resands if the attack doesn't hit. I think this speaks for itself. I think it speaks. He also has some other on stride effect where you could boost or descend in stride. It doesn't matter. He literally exists for this. There's a reason he's like the go to backup grade three in Vanquisher and all in our comic decks right now. And. Yeah, if you're sitting on a resetting Vanguard that says if I don't hit, okay, give the power to him. If you're sitting on this gauntlet that has like 10 billion crits on it and your opponent's got a perfect guard, okay, give everything to him. Attack, attack. One of these will eventually kill you. So the only thing that's in here is really generation restricted, which kind of sucks. 
But, yeah, just such a fantastic backup rear guard. Really the reason that Rackhead is able to shine again. Moving on to grade twos. We got Four Zwitton. This is a card that I said um, combos with your starter. You don't have that much natural counter charge in the deck, so what he's going to do is on hit, soul charge one, counter charge one. Pretty simple, pretty standard. It's cute, gives you resources back, gives you more on hit pressure. So, like I said, you can be doing a lot of retarded stuff in this deck. And combo with him. Especially in this Vanguard line, you'd be like, alright, 14 Vanguard hits, cool. Skill counter blast one, nuke their board. Skill counter charge one, get that resource right back. Great combo piece. Should always run four of them in any right here deck. The rest of my grade two lineup is kind of beat six. So we got three Hakushu Sho and four Spark Rain Dragon. Uh, Spark Rain's a little bit more simple, he's just a standard 12k attacker. Once again, coming out of the gate, you could go, okay. Vanguard swing, whatever, 12k rear guards, 12k rear guards. If you swing at their 7k grade 1, if you go first, which you're always going to go first in this deck, then it's very much a 10k guard on rear guard columns, which makes it very aggressive. And he's always just a threat because he's always 12k. Uh, same thing here, he's kind of like Gauntlet Buster and, <coughs> excuse me, another grade 1 that I'll show you in a little bit, where anytime a card gets retired, he gets a plus 3. This does stack. So, one retire from, say, a gauntlet skill or something. Also, he's a 12k. Same thing as him. You're now running more 12k attackers. Um, this could be possibly replaced by a couple other cards, such as, uh, was it the Twin Sword Arachnid, I believe, the one that retires another card, which I think it's okay. It's very much a win more, but if you want to combo more off it, that'd be great. You could also run that 8k Interceptor that gets rid of a card when he intercepts. Or possibly the 10k. I don't think the deck really needs the 10k that much. It's very up to debate, but because this is limit break based, because you just very much go in out of the game, just go in, I don't care what happens, then I don't really think it's needed. You'll just ride your grade 3 anyways. And we're riding 8 grade 3s, so there should be reason to not hit them. So there's that. Um, perfect guards. The perfect guard. This is actually the Radicare one, because like I said, names do matter for a lot of your costs, like counter blasts and stuff like that. Um, he's one of the older ones, so he discards anything, which is cool. And yeah, Eradicator, that's very important to have. Of course, another Eradicator is the new Stride Fighter that we're running three of. This isn't one of the new wave Stride Fighter, I'd say. We're going to have different effects besides just gets plus three or whatever. Um, standard fair, so he's a 3k thing. And he has a neat skill where we're using the Stride into an Eradicator, I believe. Not for anything. Cool. Um, you can blast one, check your top seven for an Eradicator grade three and add to hand. Not always going to hit necessarily, but it's great. It helps you refill for descendant turns. It helps you grab more grade threes for stride fodder. My cat's about to walk in. Hi, kitty. My cat's a jerk. He's probably going to bite my hand. Anyway, so yeah. So he's very resourceful. I don't like this counter blast one to possibly miss, but top seven in that mid game where you're striding, you should be able to hit him. That's why I'm on three. We got three Shukis, just like Hakusho, he gets plus three whenever a card retires. Um, he's a little bit more important than the Shuki, I believe, than the Hakusho, I believe, just because he is a great one. So you can be going right out of the gate with him, like I said. Uh, like, a cute thing you could do is, um, if you board these with, say, the 12k attackers and your attacking row on grade two, you're going to be swinging 14 at Vanguard, retiring their starter with Lynch you. Also on Heap Prox, he's going to be a 10k booster. On the 12k attacker, that's a 22 calm right there. Ridiculous. And once again, that Lynchy pressure is literally whenever. This stacks up with a lot of cards. Power guard. It's it's good. It's power creep the deck. And final grade one is, of course, the limit break enabler. Because this limit break deck, we want to enable it. Um, basically, your limit break becomes active when you're not at limit break. So you just go gauntlet right off the bat. It's really good because you want to make sure you hit your limit breaks fast early off if they're not really trying to damage you that much and they're trying to play conservative. And especially with the Gauntlet Buster Vanguard, that it just cues your defensive limit break. So you could activate with your G guards and stuff. So that's triggers, pretty simple. Run some crits. He doesn't matter too much. I, I run these crits mostly for art because I like the art. Uh, always eradicators, always eradicators. Always eradicators. That's a new one. A uh, plus three standard Margul clone. It fixes numbers a little bit, doesn't matter too much. So it's always nice to have that there. So we got none of those. We are actually running three stand triggers for some odd reason. 
Um, I've been testing out stands a lot in this build. I think that with your early game pressure, stands are just as critical as criticals. Not to make that fun, but um, there are options there to play around with the trigger lineup, mess around with it if you want. This is kind of where I decided with a happy medium was nine crits, three stands. In addition, this is also a counter charger, so that's great because you do run a lot of counter blasts in this deck. And of course, heals. I run two of each for AK1 because they're both adorable. And we got another grid zero. It's not Lynch you. It's the new starter. Um, another on hit thing, more on hit pressure. Awesome. Her skill is basically you retire her after the attack hits, check your top three. If there are rad carriers, add one to hand. And if it was a grade three, then you could also soul charge one. The uh, soul charge one doesn't matter too much, but um, helps you do anything. This deck is all eradicators and helps possibly to refill costs, which is great. Not bad. Nice little on hit pressure, nice tech. Might try it out for something else, but whatever. So that is the main deck, the most important part. We also got some strides, I guess. So I guess I should show them off. Um, that's the Gauntlet Buster stride. Does the Gauntlet Buster things. Basically, um, he activates a skill on GB2 that can blast one flip anything, and he becomes a Gauntlet Buster till in turn. So every time a card is retired, he gets plus five into crits. This does stack, and you get a free retire if you have a Gauntlet Heart. So it's pretty cool. Of course, he does flip a card, so we run this guy. This is basically our generic first stride if we can't do anything too important. Um, same thing as make sure essentially just on hit, retire one, bind two from your opponent's drop zone. Gives you a little bit on hit pressure, which is okay. You shouldn't really need it by this phase, but like I said, he's mostly there as foot fodder slash this is the GSS pair. Um, we run Descendants, so it's two Descendants stride. It's pretty much Descendants stride. I mean, if the attack doesn't hit, you pay the cost, which is kind of blast one, soul blast two, I believe. Yep. And if he doesn't hit, he restands with minus one drive. So you get five drive checks on it, which compared one more drive check, oh well. He gets bigger. And it's, I mean, it's pretty much just a giant descendant. I don't like him too much, but he does come in handy sometimes. It's very good because he's a first-term stride. Uh, yeah, sorry to show because I'm proud of Lynch you. So he has his own stride now. They're on four of it. This card is hilarious. Um, kind of blast one, flip up anything for, an, well, flip up a clone of him. And for every card that you have face up in the G zone, you retire two of your opponent's rear guards. Then if you, your opponent has no field afterwards, you get to draw a card. Oh, and you have to soul charge a card, but that's whatever. Um, so this is cute. If you're playing against anything that you could pop. Okay, cool. Skill activate on first drive, retire two. Okay, skill activate on anything but first drive, retire four. Retire an entire board. It's very good control. You're almost always going to get the free draw off it. And it does kind of force your opponent to play cards too because they don't want to draw, but at the same time, they don't want their resources out. So it's a little, little weird. I like him. It's a good stride. I enjoy him. You got the GB8 because it's freaking good on stride. You bind, banish bind, get rid of all your opponent's stuff. It goes into over their zone. And then you, all your rear guards get plus two for every card in the bind zone that turn. So, yeah, I mean, it's your finisher. You don't really need Thunderstrike that much in this deck, but if you could get here, if you somehow accelerate to your GB8 turn, which isn't too terribly hard to do in this build, then, yeah, you. this is one of the best GBAs in the game, I'd say. 100% freaking stupid, the card. Got one of the other good strides in this deck, which I'm unfortunately down to two copies of this. I was playing at four before, but I had to take out two for the uh, gauntlet stride. Um, his skill, flip himself over, retire a card in your opponent's front row, and for every open zone, your front row is going to get plus five. So if your opponent doesn't have anything in front row, which most of the time you want to try and do this, your front row is going to get plus ten, make those huge numbers, Remember, we do run the stuff like Hakusho and Shuki, so those will also get plus three on top of that. And he just makes giant numbers that turn. And finally, we got G-Guards, because it doesn't matter. Uh, one Cray Elemental is a drop and draw. It's, you don't really run into him that often, but he's there in case you need resources. We got two of this kid, the new one for the set, the one that actually inspired me to care about Dungaree again. But, um... I almost forgot what I was saying. Bind two cards from your drop zone is a different grade, and he gets plus 10 shield. 
great. You're gonna have one from the grade zero generically, and as long as you go up with anything that's not a grade zero at that point in time, you're gonna get there. Very good, very defensive. We run two because of flip fire for the um, best card in the G zone. This stupid thing. You, you, Narcomi players, you know what he does. Fixture players, you know what he does. But he works in this too. So, flip a dude. Retire a dude. Bind retire a dude. Possibly retire another dude, depending on the situation. That's going to be plus two procs on Gauntlet. Skilled by itself, which will raise them to about 17. That makes an extra stage on them to guard. And, yeah, once again, we run the attack buff stuff. So things get huge. Not quite as cute as the company you play with, Vanquisher, but still essentially does the same job. Anyways, this is my Narcomi deck. I call it... It's either 1v1 me Luard because of his lore, or I'm proud of you, Lynchu. Yeah, either way. Is this Naki deck? I play... I play it sometimes. It's very enjoyable. Um, In most of the tournaments I've played in so far, we have gone X1s. Even some against other Vanquisher decks, so this does have the potential. Like I said, it's very much an early game deck. You want to just play cards right out the gates, start swinging, push from that 3-4 damage point before you grade 3 turn, and yeah, just go ham. It's very aggressive, very control-orientated, and you do have options between the um, two main grade 3s to both give you a good accent. So, like this video if you enjoyed it. Don't forget to subscribe if you guys are new. Shoutouts to shoutouts. I don't know who I was shouting out to. But yeah, it's been Ram with another episode card table. I will catch you guys next time. Don't forget to embrace the infinite. Bye-bye.